Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Ah. Ah. Say their name and people know who they are. Well, we're lucky enough to have one of those individuals here this evening. It is, of course, the fabulous Yoko Ono. There you go. Okay. Come and sit down. Okay. That's a fabulous hat and leather jacket combo you are rocking tonight. It's a bit bigger than me. Hey, it's lovely to see you again. Thank you for joining us. Um, can I start? You had a big celebration this year. It was a big birthday this year. Uh, what was that? <laughs> what celebration? <laughs> Wasn't it? Was your birthday in February? Oh, yes, yes. Can we say which one it was? Well, you know, I became 80 and I, I'm very... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way anyone would think you're 80. Absolutely <laughs> not. You're incredible for 80. Well, I, I'm surprised too, you know. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> uh, what do you do to keep in good shape? Because you look incredible. You have fitness. Well, you I don't, don't really... Have... See, that's another thing. Uh, most people think, oh, well, I haven't done any uh, exercise, so I have to give up. Don't give up. I mean, any time when you start doing it, it works, you know. I mean, your body is really a very uh, sensitive and, and powerful thing. And I, I just, you know, most people think that, oh, she must be doing exercise every day or something. No, I just forget and do some work or something. And I say, oh, I better do some exercise. And, just... and what kind of exercise do you do? Well, I, I like to walk. So Walking nice... is supposed to be very good. 
a brisk walk. Mm -hmm. No jogging. No, no jogging. Uh, jog, well, I, I could jog me too, but I don't. <laughs> no kickboxing. Fun. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. And do you, do you, are you someone who has a very strict routine about the, the number of hours you sleep, the amount of water you drink? No. Okay. Right now, I just finished making an album, which well, is really great. This is incredible. How many age are you old? You're sitting at home saying, you know, I've got to finish that new album. <laughs> <laughs> because since your 80th birthday, you've had a number, another number one dance single. Yes. It's incredible. So you've had how many number one dance singles have you had in the States? Ten. I had ten consecutively. Ten number one. Ten consecutively. <laughs> And this is since your 80th birthday, you had another <laughs> yeah, number one. Yeah. Wow. But you still have the energy to go on stage, you still perform. Well, see, that's another thing that I realised that, I mean, just like everybody else, you know, I thought, 80, well, that means that maybe you'll just be asleep or, you know, always <laughs> in bed or something. No, you get more energy, more energy than what you had before. We've got some footage of you. you. You always love to dance. Yeah, yeah. Ever since you were tiny. I love dancing. Oh, yeah. When I was a little girl, yes, I was... Whenever I was filmed, for some reason, I started dancing. That's so sweet. We have some footage of Yoko. I'm not sure how old you are here. Do I was you know two and a half years old. This is Yoko when she was two and a half years old and essentially kind of looks the same. It's about the same height. <laughs> dancing. Look, look at this. And that's my daddy. <laughs> it's the same moves as well. You're doing that. <laughs> oh, really, please. It's so sweet to your day there. But your mum and dad, they didn't approve. When you married John, they didn't approve of that, did they? I felt that um, they wanted me to become a very good classical musician. And instead of that, I married into a rock family, you know, yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. And so it was the whole rock and roll, the kind of anti-establishment. Yeah, exactly. So we could prejudice towards rock and roll, I suppose. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a question. This is, and I hope this doesn't, isn't too personal, but you, you still live in the Dakota building in New York. Yes, I am. And that's the building, of course, where John was murdered outside. You were with him when he was shot. Yes, but, you know, it was our home. That was the only home we had. And uh, with, well, that's the only home I had with John. I'm not going to leave it. One thing I think, which I think definitely we can trace back to you and John, certainly if you look now, it's very unusual to find uh, any intelligent member of the rock fraternity or the R&B fraternity who, who if, if he or she is not involved in issues, is not involved in trying to change things for the better in the way they see it. And I think one can trace that back pretty much directly to you guys. You were kind of the pioneers of that, that sort of thing. Yeah, we were in a way, yeah. But I mean, I think that these days when I look around, uh, most musicians are activism. I mean, activists. And it's really great. I mean, it's just getting to be like the whole world is becoming activists. And, and that's how we're going to make it. Do you think John would have approved? Do you think he would have been part Well, I think he's uh, having a big smile now. <laughs> yes. That's so sweet. Um, I know you're very active on Twitter. And this is an interesting thing because there aren't that many octogenarians on Twitter that I'm aware of. Uh, you seem to embrace new technology. You're not one of these people who is frightened. You seem to adopt uh, and adapt yeah, pretty well, quickly. Well, you see the meltdown too. I'm inviting people who are very... Uh, Sort of, uh, uh, avant well, it's, I wouldn't say avant-garde, but very new music and also new ideas. Yeah. You know, all the sort of heavy women artists, but also uh, men who are sort of new age men. So, you know. so like Iggy Pop, for example. Iggy Pop, uh, Boy George, you know, it's, uh, all the people who understand about women as well. And you've got, and Patti Smith is on the bill as well. Patti so Smith is there, incredible yeah. Incredible voices and incredible. Yeah. Uh, and and Pussy Riot, do you know, from Russia? I do know Pussy Riot. Yeah, yeah, you I know. I thought some of Pussy Riot were in jail. Are they out now, or are they still...? Well, there? some of them are still, uh, sort of, right. uh, in there. Wow, so you've been in... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, so some will be here, and we hope we can get the rest out yes, eventually. Yes. Uh, that's exciting, though. Um, and you are performing. Do you do new material on stage, or is it... Do you know what material you'll be doing, what set you'll be doing? Well, I'm doing, uh, well, classical on a band. And uh, in the end, I think that the last day we're doing double fantasy. <laughs> oh, wow. Incredible. And this is the first time that double fantasy is being done this way. Yeah. So this will be the first live performance of double fantasy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Let me ask you about something. And I've never asked you this, I don't think. Is for all that period when people were blaming you for the breakup of the Beatles. 
Well, you know, I've been blamed, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 years now. You so know? you were aware of that going on? You were aware oh, that's what people Oh, I was fully aware of it because it was like there was jabbing all the time. Like acupuncture, you know? it, it is probably actually healthy that people jab me and I was turning that negative energy into positive energy. And that's why I think that one of the reasons that I'm healthy now is because we're healthy, well, sort of healthy, <laughs> healthy is because uh, I went through all that. And thank you very much. <laughs> So the negativity, you could turn that into a positive in some way. But it was very sweet recently, I thought, that, that Paul came out, Paul McCartney came out and cleared the air a little bit and said, look, you know, for those people that who... That was are... very sweet of him to yeah. do that. I'm sure that, you know, she got tons of letters saying, how dare you say that? I mean, you know, because they like the idea of us being in a boxing ring, you know, sort of quite different. Also, it's good to have... They, people like having someone to demonise. People like having someone yeah, yeah. to blame. You know, and you were, you were the easy target, I guess. Well, you know, we know each other for such a long time, and, and she's a very sensitive and intelligent guy, so, of course, you know, she understands what was going on, yeah. that it wasn't going on. Yeah. What's your favourite song you've written? Well, I like all my songs. <laughs> <laughs> so, what very good. <laughs> okay, and from John's body of work, from the songs that you know he wrote, which one is the one Of course, John that... is very special, you know, and he's, uh, uh, well, I'm not saying that he's the only, but I think he, he was a genius, yes. And he wrote Woman for you, didn't he, with some... I know. Which is... Well, oh, no, I know you know, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you didn't know, this would have been a funny way to find out, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but one thing, I mean, what a beautiful song. Well, you know, it, it wasn't very easy for me, because after John passed away, you know, um, I go to a shop or something, and they're playing Woman, you know. It's a bit... Just, you know, to choke me up, actually. <laughs> so they would put it on when you went in the evening? Mm -hmm. No, that's awful. Awesome, no, 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 they weren't doing it intentionally, you know. It's just that it's going on on the radio. It was a hit. Yeah.